So did you just use a finger in the Heroku? That, um, a, so it was mostly free. Um, I was using this gem called Delay Job, which actually needs its own scheduler, so that was an extra uh, dino. Yeah. Um, which uh, was all using Smart Chicago's account, uh, so it was some extra cost. But I think there's probably some ways to get around to doing that. And for those folks who are not familiar, Roku is an app hosting service. So normally, if you make a little web application like this, it needs to live somewhere on some computer. And traditionally, you would buy a computer, install your thing, turn on, you know, add an address so that now if I go to, you know, a Smart Chicago it finds that server and then gets you the page back. Nowadays, it's not nearly that manual. You can actually just kind of take your code that runs that whole website and you just push it to the, the cloud, and then it just makes the thing work. So that's what Heroku is. It's a really kind of almost hands-off way of hosting web applications like this one. And if you're a civic developer who wants to use Heroku or Amazon Web Service for their civic app, for your civic app, um, if you go to Smart Chicago on um, their projects, we have hosted web space. You fill out this form. And then Scott Robin will get in touch with you and get you for server space. Hey, Christopher, just real quick, we've been using a lot of OpenShift and Molly. I don't know if it's a, you guys have any experience with it as well here. Or we've talked to OpenShift, but there hasn't been a demand for it yet. If we suddenly start getting a lot of people who want OpenShift, we'll ping them. Absolutely. OpenShift is an alternative to Heroku. Yeah. Most people actually go for Amazon. Like I know, I think EC2, like a server, EC2. Server. Yeah. yeah, I think there's only like a handful of people actually using proper Roku. What other tech questions? Is, is there a reason why most people choose Amazon versus Roku? I don't actually. I don't. Uh, I don't so if you, um, what's really cool about Roku is if you um, oftentimes when you open on a project, you use GitHub or some sort of version control uh, system like it. Um, Heroku acts just like a place you can push your code to. So you can literally deploy your site from the command line to so git push Heroku and it just like launches your site. That's that's the magic of Heroku. So I, I assume OpenShift does the same thing, right? Basically. Um, EC2 is basically like here is a server and you have to manage it and like install your database and do all that. So Heroku is giving you all this stuff, sort of it does all the magic for you. Um, you can also get in trouble with it if you if it breaks. It's like, ah, I have no idea what's going on because it's just magic and magic box broke. Uh, but if it's easy too, you kind of like, you take on more of that responsibility and you have more control. So it's kind of a trade off. And we also have a, a, a Scott Robin X is our DevOps guy. And so if you're unfamiliar with EC2, he can help guide you. Yeah. And here's really meta Heroku is hosted on EC2. So it's all EC2. <laughs> DC2 all the way down. <laughs> Someone else. So outreach is a pretty generic thing that community groups do all the time. Um, and you just told a very compelling story about how data collection uh, during outreach helps you potentially not only kind of optimize that outreach, but then tell a really compelling story later. So, and then there's the additional thing of, all right, so if we're getting people contact numbers for people, let's reach them, let's reach out to them through email or phone or whatever works. Are there plans to turn uh, your texting app and kind of the way it plugs into Wufu and so on into a generic tool that people could use? But it wouldn't take very much work. I am glad you asked. So uh, part of what Smart Chicago wants to do is to generate a civic tech marketplace. And so we've contracted out with a number of civic startups, including DataMade, uh, Purple Binder, and most recently, and this is like very early, we're still um, in the process of actually deploying this, but we just signed a deal with Postcode IO. Uh, Postcode IO is a civic startup made up of pretty much half of last year's Code for America follows. One of their products that they built last year was a tool called Promptly that has a pretty similar functionality to uh, the at the Wufu, the Twilio form that we just, uh, that we used for uh, the List Chicago project. So we've contact, contacted with them to provide us five campaigns, one of which is going to be working with the Cook County court system to send text message reminders for uh, people to show up to court. Because if you don't show up to court on time, 
they put out a warrant for your arrest, and they have to delay your court date, which costs the Cook County, which costs Cook County more money. Warrants are very bad things, and it's not good. Currently, the way they schedule your court date is you get arraigned, they tear off a half slip of paper, they write down your court date, they hand it to you, and that's it. You don't get a letter, don't get a phone call, don't get anything but a half slip of paper. And if you are like me, if you hand me a half slip of paper, it is going to get washed or dropped or something. So there is a particular port called the ACT port, which is the alternative, uh, it's sort of an alternative experimental port. Uh, dealing mostly with drug conventions. And so we're going to work with them to set up a text reminder system so that they get a message the Sunday night before and then the, the night before. And we're going to do it with just the one port initially. But if it works out really well, Chronicle has the ability to integrate with systems. Uh, their Chronicle's first uh, customer was the San Francisco county um, health care. So in California, the county deals with food stamps. And so they use promptly to message people who are receiving food stamps, hey, you should come in. There's a problem with your account. And if you don't contact us, you could lose your food stamps. And this helped drop the number of people who got dropped off the food stamp rolls quite a bit. So we're hoping to do something similar with promptly where we start sending out text message reminders and people show up to court when they're supposed to. No warrants getting arrest, getting sent out. No more rescheduled court dates and things go a little bit more smoothly. Uh, that sounds cool. Uh, so 